I guess we'll just get started. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's get started. Why not? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Let's Get Trashed. Your weekly dose of Let's Get Trashed that you are, uh, at this point, probably addicted to. Beans. Clamoring beans. for. Crackheads. Yeah. Trash heads, we call them. Trash heads. Uh, I, you, you can't imagine going a week without your week. You don't know what to watch. You just you, couldn't help yourself. You have no idea what to watch. You're, you have this big expensive TV and it's just sitting there blank or even worse. You're on Netflix, like constantly scrolling because you have no idea what to watch. You don't understand. You don't understand how to navigate, uh, the this ever increasing world of digital content, content and luckily hurts. for you luckily for you the let's get trash boys are here to help all right we're here to tell you what to watch or what not to watch you idiot you don't know what to watch yeah you you know what you listen to us and this week this week every comment first of all there better be a bunch of comments and they better all be saying thank you just heartfelt thank yous, all right? Yep. <clears throat> no, I'm kidding. I thought you would have learned from Thanksgiving. I've heard zero thanks. <laughs> you people are probably fine. You probably know what to watch, but I'm glad you... I do appreciate you tuning in. <laughs> please, please watch this. You. Please, please share this, please. Please, yeah. Please, we, God. We, I'm, I'm dying over here. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Before we even get to anything, um, I've... I, I watched I went to the movie theater twice in two days. I went yesterday I went yesterday That's fun. to see the movie we're discussing today, the menu. And then I went today to see the Fablemans. Oh yeah. How was it? <clears throat> Amazing. Are you it's gonna awesome. do Oh good. That's good. Are you it's gonna so do an episode good. on it? I imagine you are. I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind <clears throat> doing it. Um uh, I don't know if, how necessary it is, uh, but I'm just gonna right off the bat just uh let's get trashed impromptu recommendation corner brought to you by let's get trashed industries go watch the fablemans because it's oh matt it's beautiful what's it's so like, good what's like the theme of it like what's what's kind of like the it is it's coming of age which is famously my least favorite no not my least favorite my most hated genre of film is coming of age mm-hmm the uh fucking the sandlot uh yeah. kids walking on the railroad tracks in a Stephen King book um any any time it's like uh uh even like Ferris Bueller anything that's like we grew up in the anytime I mean, you're growing up on camera I you're like watching fucking hate teenagers it. flirt with each other and you're like what am I doing why am I watching this yeah I just I I I Why do hate I care it? if these twelve year olds like make out with each other that's just yeah i mean that's the only me. yeah the only this is this is the only good one <clears throat> the only other one that's kind of watchable is uh the one where macaulay culkin gets killed by bees i didn't even know that was a scene in a real movie my girl yeah he gets killed by bees okay um pretty sure it's macaulay culkin yeah who else could it possibly be very young Macaulay Culkin. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't like movies about kids. I don't like I don't like coming of age. I don't like growing up. But. Did you like the movie The, uh, the Passion of the Christ? Because that he's a boy. You know, for he's not. A little bit a of boy. it. Yeah, for, it's, well, a pa- it's a passion play. The passion play <laughs> is literally the 12 scenes, whatever that's called, the 12 scenes of dying on the cross, the yeah. stations of the cross. I knew it. He's coming of age. You know what I mean? No, it's literally about him dying. Well, he's a boy in it. There's a scene. Oh, <clears throat> well, there's not supposed to be. Okay. Well, the, tr- the traditional passion play, which is what the passion of the Christ is based off is it's just like stations of the cross cross. It's just him like dying. <clears throat> Bummer. Um, yeah, which is also not that fun. Big bummer. But um, the Fableman is like Spielberg's autobiography. I don't know why he even it's called it cock. the Fableman. No, no, it's awesome. Okay, it's good. He should have called it the Spielbergs. I don't even know what the big deal is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's the point of pretending this isn't you. Yeah, because it is true. 
um, a lot of it's like very, very true, I think. But it's awesome. I thought I wasn't going to like it. Spielberg is obviously one of the best directors ever, but he's very, um, I don't know. He seems kidnappable to me. I don't know if that's the word you're looking for. No, that was not like the word I, I was looking for. Take him. It's a very weird way. That's not exactly. That's not at all where you. I were didn't. Going I thought that. you were going there. <laughs> no, you didn't. Don't listen to people. Don't listen to Jimmy. <laughs> He's trying to sow discord. <clears throat> no, I don't know. He's he's uncool. He's like too good at what he does, but he's he's oftentimes not very like doesn't have a lot of personality but he's very very good sometimes he does jaws is amazing he has some all-time bangers and he has a lot of like wow this guy's really good at directing but if you were an if you were a non-artistic person but you wanted to be a movie director spielberg's the guy you should emulate <laughs> If you just don't have an art bone in your body, but you just are like I'm gonna be a film director, if you if you're driven, yeah, like how how do I physically make this kind of stuff happen when I'm not an artistic person? You just emulate Spielberg. I'm not saying that about him, but I'm saying that he kind of puts off that vibe sometimes. Yeah, like you can just uh, take him. Well, he he's just got like he's so technical and he's he he makes stuff so I don't know. Honestly, most of his stuff is pretty awesome. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. The Fablemans, especially. My, I just watched it today. It's like I've been. I mean, I'm a huge day. Paul Dano fan, so that that uh, to me alone is the only he's, reason I wanted to watch it. But he's incredible in it. He's so good. Uh, he's so sick. I've only seen him in one. I've seen him as the Joker, or not the Joker, the Question Mark Joker. Yeah. The question. Um, <laughs> I've seen him as the Question Mark Joker, and I thought he sucked. The question Mark Joker. I thought that movie was bad. There will be blood. He's in that movie. I haven't seen that yet. I've tried. You know what? Some prisoners. Now I'm outing myself as a as a lameo. I I watched a part of it, but I I haven't finished it. I need to watch the whole thing. Okay. They could so none of that. They could have named the passion. There will be blood. Did you think about yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> none of that's important. Anybody? <clears throat> none of that's important, folks. But do go see the Fablements. Um, I probably won't do an episode on it, but I will just say go see it because it rules. Uh, however, we are going to get down and dirty. We're going to get deep into the menu, um, which I saw yesterday. When did you see it? Two days ago? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so starring Ray Fiennes and Anya Taylor-Joy and then, uh, a bunch of other very capable actors. Was that Jane Lynch? As as the the woman, couldn't tell you. Do you know who Jane know. Lynch is? Have no idea. The the woman, like the funny woman from like Forty Year Old Virgin, she was in all those comedies. Short haired blonde woman. I'm pretty sure that's her. Hmm. I'm gonna find. John Leguizamo is in this movie. I know that. Oh yeah, Leguizamo. Yeah, I like him. Um. Uh. <clears throat> Let's see. check our sources here. Yeah. The menu. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What it's saying it's, it's saying it's not her. You know. That's weird. Hold on, let me find. Uh, I'm surprised now. I might cut all this out. You're talking about Janet McTeer, the critic. I don't know who. I'm t yeah, the the critic. The, her name is Janet McTeer. I just looked it up. Janet so. McTeer. Okay. I really thought that was Jane Lynch. Um, let me, let me, you know, let me see, man. That's funny. What has she been in? I've never heard of, I've never heard that oh, name before. Okay. Um, I and, haven't either, but I did not for one second think, think that that was Jane Lynch. I thought it was Jane Lynch being like, not funny, but, or not, not be, funny anymore. It, but like you could be like the uglier twin, maybe of, uh, what is her name? Something McTeer. Of McTeer. Janet McTeer. Of Mc, Janet McTeer. I'm going through Janet's filmography, and I'm already back to 1992, and I haven't seen a single thing that I recognize. So <laughs> she's in a lot of movies go. that no one cared about. Yeah, good, you know what? Just good for you, Janet. Stay Stick with employed. it. Good. Yeah, she is. Stick good. with it, because eventually you'll be in a movie. I see. Oh, she. Never mind. I take it back. I I skipped. 
she was in Ozark. She was Helen in Ozark. I haven't seen. So in the in the first and second, maybe even third season, she's a uh, she's one of the villains of Ozark. Nice. Yeah. How about she was also that? in Maleficent. Okay. Yeah, I never saw that. Um. <clears throat> so. Think about. It's just like that. It's it's exactly what the trailer makes you think it is. Oh, the menu. The menu. Yeah. yeah. They're going there. So if you've seen the trailer, and I think we've talked about it on the trailer trashed, they're going to um. They're going to a private island to eat at a fancy restaurant. They only take twelve customers a day. It's well over a thousand dollars. He said it's like twelve hundred and fifty dollars a plate. Yeah, he said twelve fifty. Uh, yeah, twelve fifty. Which I'm going to be honest with you, that's a that's a lot of money. That's a crazy. I thought amount it of money would be like, more. I thought it would be right. More. I think it could have been to, more, and that would have been absolutely fair game. Yeah, but that type I, of operation, you know, for sure. It, this is not to say I have this kind of money or would ever spend this kind of money on this kind of thing. Um, not at all. But it's <laughs> like you're taking a private yacht ten grand. to a private what was it what was that number in grand 10 maybe, maybe more 10's high 10's high i think 10 it's is like high. if you're if you're if you're we're talking about filthy rich people they really well, yeah they want to pay but, like the, they're paying the amount is really what they they're paying for you're like oh i took you to a fifty thousand dollar dinner you know true i but see, that's the thing is i don't think it's supposed to be quite that exclusive it's not supposed to be like i'm t- unaccessible yeah, it, you know, but it, it's supposed to be definitely like ridiculous, but I mean 1250 is ridiculous. Yeah. But if they had said 10,000 I would have been like that doesn't make sense. Uh but if they had said 3,000 Yeah. You know, people pay that much to you know, to eat dinner with the Obamas. You know what I mean like Ooh. shitty dinners that are like at political political uh if you you know, you go to the the DNC convention or, you know, it's a fun, a political front fundraiser. Yeah. Those are like $10,000 a, a head, 12,000, you know, that, but that's cause you know, most of that money is going to whatever. And it actually is like a tax write off and stuff like that. So those numbers are inflated. Um, and also our politicians are evil and they ex- <laughs> accept wild amounts that, you know, that the fact that they're even taking that kind of money from citizens and corporations is disgusting but that's not the point <laughs> it's kind of the point it's kind of always the point if you think about it so the trailer shows us going <clears throat> the menu anya taylor joy is with her foodie boyfriend he's the one that paid for this he's super duper excited about all of this mm-hmm. he's he's kind of a He's kind of insensitive. He's kind of a jerk. He's he's focused on he's focused on this thing that's super important to him, yeah. and he doesn't want anything to ruin it. And he's willing to be rude to his uh, girlfriend for, for that for that so, experience. You know, she's trying to <laughs> it's pretty funny in the movie. Yeah, he's very funny. Yeah. He's the funniest part of the film. Yeah. They'll actually talk start, set the whole movie up. The whole movie is really funny. It's way funnier than I thought it would be. It's strange. But it it is funny. It is, but it, yeah. it's really funny. It's uh, super unique. Uh, I've never. Yeah, can is, you think of any movie that this is like similar to? No, not really at all. Yeah, I think this is a. I think this is a new one. I mean, I was afraid it was going to be like one of those things where it's like we are humans and you. You're, it's a cannibal thing, you know? Because that scene with them like running in the woods in the trailer. I'm like, is this going to be the like trailer? Yeah, you know, like man's greatest hunt or whatever that book is or story is you know uh the most dangerous game most dangerous game yeah well let's not spoil it yet because maybe it is that oh that's not a spoiler <laughs> uh <clears throat> maybe it is that You're... maybe it is that maybe it's that <laughs> now we'll get we'll, we'll get to spoilers pretty quickly because i don't want to spend too much time but anyway we we set the stage and so there's a group of like there's the group of like finance bros mm-hmm there's the failing actor, Leguizamo, the old, formerly successful actor, and his like assistant or whatever. Um, it's Anya Taylor Joy and her dork boyfriend, who's like couldn't be more excited for this experience. Um, it's 
you know, an old man and his wife who've done it a bunch of times. This is their eighth time eating at this restaurant. Tenth time, whatever it is, you know. Um, he just has a ton of money and is just like, it's a status thing for him to do, but doesn't seem to care that much. Either way, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, they all, they just start off all boarding this yacht and they're going to this private island where they're collecting, they're collecting the the scallops that day for that night's meal and all this kind of stuff and blah, 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 and all this kind of nonsense. And yeah. it's just like, you know. It seems like a cool idea for a restaurant if it was. It is. Well, it's, it's a it's, real. It's a cool concept. It's a real, it's based on a real restaurant. Oh, okay. The, the guy that wrote it, actually, the writer went to a restaurant like this that he had to get on a boat and go to like a private island type of thing. Oh, interesting. And and <clears throat> went to a restaurant like this. And then, you know, the the boat comes and picks you up after the meal. So that's what sparked this whole idea. Because the idea he had was, he's like, what if I was trapped here? Oh, yeah. And then he just wrote a movie around that. <clears throat> so... Um, they're uh, you know they're going through they're taking their little tour of the island as they're walking to the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Uh, they sit down, and then they start getting they they're fed they're fed wine they're plied with wine and the first course the appetizer whatever kind of stuff, and then stuff starts to turn, and then it you know it starts getting rude. The, uh, Ray finds is the head chef, and more and more, he's rude. And there's a there's a maitre dame, uh, the woman, uh, played by uh, Allison Hong. Mm. Oh yes, What's, yes. Ho, no, Hong Chow is her name. Elsa was the character name. Her she name was, was like Hong the Chow. Scariest one. Uh, yeah, she was, and also. I appreciate I appreciate this. Hong Chao is like beautiful in real life, but she 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 makes herself look you know she looks like a working girl like a working class like she's in a you know her hair's all pulled back. She's not wearing a hairnet, but she she looks like lunch lady. She just looks like she's on the job. Yeah, she's a beautiful actress, and she could be playing only beautiful roles, but she doesn't want to only play beautiful roles, which I respect. I respect any time an actress is like yeah, she's a dog in this in this movie. Okay, calm saying. down, dude. That's 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 that. Now you're being rude. Okay, I maybe I'm pick some you, stuff you, from the movie. From the name. you related too much with the head chef. Now you're now you're being rude. I method. I don't method act. I method react. <laughs> I method react. <laughs> I method watch. I method watch. I'm like I'm like uh, what's his name? Tom Hanks' son when he's doing the Joker all the time in interviews. That's how. That's oh, Chet name. Hayes. Yeah, Chet Hanks. Chet Hanks. Yeah. He rules. I just watched that Joker impression. Yeah. It's so funny. It's not bad. It, it is not bad. It just it's very genuinely good. insane to do. Well, he just won't stop doing it. He just and he's only just quoting lines. He also can't like come up with any words on his own. Yeah. So he just is parroting lines from the movie. And that 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 black chick Z Way, the talk show host, the like the the gotcha talk show host. Yeah. She's the one. She's sitting there, just like horrified that this guy he won't stop. He fucking got her, I think, because she didn't know what to do. She's like, yeah, she was like star. She was like not starstruck. She was stunned on her own show. Yeah, yeah. and the whole she point was, of her show is to like stun people. I didn't even have know that seen, was the you, point of the, her show. That's interesting. Yeah, she's. I mean, her show's like they they do they put clips on TikTok. She's her her joke is that she's she um she's black and she brings on like white actors and actresses and stuff like that or white music she just brings on white people on her show and then she like she asks them like leading questions trying to say something like she's trying she's tricking them to say something racist it's about time dude it's yeah. about time yeah uh yeah so chet hanks is, is literally the only one that that turned the They're tables right. on her because everyone else you know He's- all these other White stars, Phoebe Bridgers is freaking out. Like all, you know, and he's like, she's like, "What do you mean by that?" And it's you know, like, what, what do you mean by the people? You know, it, it's it's all that. Like, what do you mean by you people? It, it's yeah. that kind of thing, okay. and just making somebody uncomfortable. Okay, it's uh, it's sounds, pretty. Funny that sounds sometimes. like it could be funny. Some of, uh, some of the clips are pretty funny, uh, but it's the best is when they just like 
you know, like Chet Hanks, the the master. Yeah, the master disruptor. Chet, yeah, he's the only he's the only dude with the wherewithal to turn did, it on. Did he do a Jamaican accent in that interview? That was part of the thing. I think she was like, oh, grilling him on because he he does the Jamaican he said, accent. Screw that! I'll just do the Joker. And yeah, and she goes, she goes, you know, you're not Jamaican. They, and you know, she's she says she says a lot of shit that's not real, like cultural appropriation or whatever. She says like that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. So anybody, so he's like, why do you talk Jamaican like that? So I don't know. Yeah, and she, you know, she's not wrong. He shouldn't talk Jamaican, but not for the reasons she thinks. Yeah, <laughs> the reason he should not talk Jamaican is not because of whatever cultural appropriation. It's because of he sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. It's stupid. He sounds dumb when he does it. So yeah. that's why you shouldn't do it. Yeah, you know, he's not harming Jamaica. Jamaica's fine, <laughs> or they're as fine as they're gonna be, whether he does that voice or not. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's get into spoilers now, because we got all we got right up to the to the part where our chef is being kind of rude. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I would say, if I you know if I was a chef trying to impress people, I wouldn't be rude. I th- I think you can catch more flies with locally sourced uh, fair trade honey. All right, we're in spoilers now. Um, skip to one hour, six minutes, and 11 seconds. In order to avoid spoilers, if that matters to you. But I'm going to tell you it shouldn't matter to you on this movie. Uh, okay. The rudeness is step one, but it goes fast. It goes beyond rude pretty quickly, right? Yeah. Are you, are you talking about... When the when his sous chef comes up, because that's like the first thing where you're like, "Oh fuck, this is about to get crazy." Is that the first thing? To me, it was. No, the tortillas, the tortillas with their private was that lives before on that. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was weird. That was weird as hell. Um, <clears throat> he's. I mean, because he's doing the thing where he's like, "I stabbed a." Uh, I stabbed somebody in the thigh. So here's a chicken thigh with oh, a, with the scissors with a yeah. knife in it or the scissors in it mm-hmm. and use this to make your use this to make your tacos. Here's here's our homemade corn tortillas and we used a laser instead of just like grilling them, we used a laser to like burn a a a, image, a, yeah. a, a grill pattern onto it, an image onto it. But they did a bunch of different images for so for the finance bros, it's uh, bank statements of like the money they were stealing. Mm-hmm. For the old man and his wife, it's pictures of the old man cheating on his wife with a prostitute. They don't explain how they got that. Yeah. Um. With the what was it for John Leguizamo and his uh, his assistant? It was a it was, was a poster of his old movie. Oh and, yeah, it was supposed and to then he's like, I just don't like that movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, yeah, it was a poster of his like comedy bomb, the the island of or the 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 Doctor Sunshine movie, whatever yeah. whatever nonsense movie it was. It's like obvi- he's obviously like an Adam Sandler type. It, everybody's like, your movies used to be so funny, and then it's like now he sucks. Yeah, except Adam Sandler doesn't suck. Adam Sandler rules. But he has plenty of bad modes. Yeah, it's like Jack and Jill. If a chef got mad at Adam Sandler for for seeing Jack and Jill, <laughs> <laughs> seeing Click. No, Click was good. Shut oh, your Click? goddamn mouth. Yes, dude. Okay. Click rules. Are you kidding? I don't know. Are you kidding? Click was great. I cried. I don't remember crying. You should have. It was fucking. It was heartbreaking. I don't. Click remember. is good. Click's a good movie. That was a great run because he had Click and Spanglish back to back. Oh, Spanglish is really good. Yeah, so he had a good run of like comedy dramas, like heartfelt kind of comedies that were that were really good. Um, which is actually what he's best at because like his best, the best ever Adam Sandler movie is The Wedding Singer. That is a great movie. That's the best one. I mean, it's it's funnier than like. I love Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, but The Wedding Singer is better than those two. I loved it. It's not as like stupid funny, but it's super, it's crazy funny and it's really like, 
it has more heart than those other movies do. And that's why it's the best. And and Click's not that good, but Click and Spanglish were like kind of that tier of of like heartfelt stuff, which is always so much better. I guess what what were those movies about like family and water parks? Grown ups. Grown ups, yeah. That's probably where people started to like not trust him as much as like a movie maker. I mean, no, Jack um well oh yeah, grown ups grown ups two is like famously awful. I like grown ups, the first one. Grown ups two is bad, although I mean it still has funny. It's still funny. But then Jack and Jill is and like Jim's uh, or Uncle Jim's. Yeah, Uncle Jim's is the best acting anybody's ever done. Punch Truck Love is some of the best Incredible. acting anybody's ever done. He's so funny in that, dude. In un- in punch and punch drunk, or yeah, punch drunk love. I think yeah. it's probably my favorite of his. He's great. He's, I mean, yeah, he's a tremendous actor. Uh, the Netflix stuff is also like you know bad. Yeah, the duo ridiculous six and uh, oh ridiculous six man, that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. And then the other one, you know, the one with him and Jennifer Aniston, and they're like, you know, whatever. Uh, so yeah, Leg Le- Le- was almost playing that kind of guy. Yeah. But without the, he hasn't rehabbed his image with uncut gems yet. <clears throat> um, but as as it as it becomes clear that this night is not what they think it is, you know, shit gets getting getting like you know more and more. I mean, and, and they're being like the staff is being rude, and then they're not giving these people what they want, and it's just like. This kind of whole thing. The only guy that's on board with all of it is uh, is the boyfriend is Anya Taylor Joy's boyfriend, Nicholas uh, Tyler. The character's name is Tyler, played yeah. by Nicholas Holt, and he's uh, he's the only dude that's like he's so in it. He loves he loves foodie culture. You know, he's watched all the all the chef's tables. He watches all the cooking shows. He's just a guy who's obsessed with foodie stuff. Uh, so that's, that's him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then you, why don't you tell us, why don't you tell us about the, why don't you tell us about the big dog, the big elephant in the room, the the thing that really turns the night, turns the corner. Well, which part? I mean, what do you mean? Like, which the sous chef? Who's oh, who's, the sous chef that I alluded yeah. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's weird the the tortilla etching thing. I guess if that's what it was. Like, okay, because uh, it's already kind of strange and it's very theatrical in the beginning. And you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. There's like a theme to it, and mm-hmm. you're like kind of listen, you know, following it through. And then obviously the invoice tortilla thing. You're like, oh, this is gonna get fucky. And then he brings the sous chef up, uh, and I imagine if you've you've seen this. Uh, you know we're in spoilers, so you know what I'm talking about. He he gives this whole spiel and then shoots about how right at the end about how he's never going to be great. Yeah, you know he's a good chef, but he's never going to be a true artist. He's never going to, you know, he's a he he's you know, yeah, he's not the real artist. Uh, and then and then what? And he kills himself. Yeah, he he takes a gun and he blows his brains they out in like the middle of the restaurant. Everything to make sure the blood doesn't get everywhere, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah this is now it's extra fucky. Yeah, and everybody's like going nuts because they've been witness to a suicide, except for except for the Tyler character who's still like he still thinks it's part of a show. Yeah, he's dialed or, in. or he's he says he's. In. Yeah, he think he says he thinks it's still part of a show, so he's like trying all the food and eating stuff, um, and he's just like he's eating all of Anya Taylor Joy's food because she doesn't particularly <laughs> give a shit about any of it, doesn't want it. Yeah, she's been freaked out or kind of like suspicious since the beginning. Yeah, well, she's just over it. She doesn't yeah. care. She's not. She's not, not charmed her. by this like rich, cra- you know, ridiculous lifestyle. Any anything, anyways. Um. And she doesn't, she doesn't take any, she doesn't take any guff. All right, she's a no nonsense kind of woman, and this is a very nonsense kind of place. <laughs> it is <laughs> very much so. Um, they did zoom in on. I just got to say, she's the hot. Honest, Anya Taylor Joy is. This is the hottest I've ever seen her. 
and she's been hot in so many things, but this is this version of her. It's 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 incredible. She kind of reminds me of. Does she remind you at all of Emma Stone? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Emma Stone was the was originally uh, originally cast for this. I could see that it was originally Emma Stone and a different director, and then uh, they both had to leave the project, or or it didn't work out, or something. You know, yeah, Hollywood stuff doesn't just work out. And then Anya Taylor Joy was at kind of. Um, you know, kind of. This is more Anya Taylor Joy in this movie is more like she's more no nonsense and badass than I've ever seen Emma Stone. Uh, you know, Emma Stone's Emma Stone's great, but she's always kind of been like, uh, you know, a good girl. But Anya Taylor Joy is she's she started smoking. She smoked cigarettes in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, at and school kept, and kept smoking to this day. Well, yeah, she she still smokes, but that's no big. But I just mean like she, that's you know, like that. Even the dude, her boyfriend was saying like, I never dated the cool girls like you, like the girls that would, the girls that would skip school and go smoke cigarettes behind the gym. Yeah, which and and just and then when they get in trouble, just not care. That's you know that's cool and. That's that's the that's who she's playing in this, and it's awesome. Um, it legitimately, I was like, I, I get it. <clears throat> uh, what we do find out early on is that Anya Anya play well, what's her character name? I can't even remember now. Margot, that's right. Margot, great name, love that name. Um, she was not the original guest for this. They never updated the guest list. So she gets there and they're like, are you Samantha? And she's like, what? And then her boyfriend has to be like, oh my God, I forgot to update the reservation. That's my ex-girlfriend's name. I booked this six months ago. I'm sorry. You know, blah, blah, blah. That's super uncomfortable. He goes through a whole thing of being uncomfortable, which we find out later is unnecessary for him to have apologized like that. She's an escort, apparently, all of a sudden. Yes. Is that what you mean? I was going to, I was literally about to mention that sort of like, Plot hole? Question mark. Uh, that was kind of strange. Because why would she care? She has no reason to be jealous in a relationship. Exactly. That yeah. you're right. You're right. That's right. that is one of the things they 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 sacrifice they in order to try to keep you in suspense or tr- in order to try to like uh, uh, delay the the revelation. Mm-hmm. They have the characters acting. In a way that, in a way that seems yeah. it seems in character at first, but after the revelation, you look back and you're like, "Well, now that we know all this information, now that we know she's an escort, that's um, that's out of character." Yeah, because for him to be like, f- f- you know, I mean, the stuff he he can be like, you know, I never got to date a cool girl like you before. Mm. You can still say that. You can say that to a cool escort, and she's obviously like a high class escort. She's not, you know, yeah. She's not scuzz. <clears throat> but the the thing to be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I forgot to update the reservation with your name. It's my ex-girlfriend's name." The escort would be like, "Yeah, I, I know you don't have a girlfriend. You I you told me why you were <laughs> Yeah, I also don't care cuz we're not dating." Yeah. Yeah, it also yeah, exactly. This also means nothing to me. <laughs> um could you be an ex escort? Would you do it? Could I be an escort? Would you? I would be. I don't think I. I don't. I don't think I could command. I don't think I could make enough money to pay any of my bills. Oh, no, if you did, if you would make enough money. Am I her? Talk am later. I her type of escort? Am I going to fancy dinners? Yeah. With you know attractive young women? Yeah, I'm a hundred percent. Or do it. maybe a man sometimes. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> the problem with being male escorts. You don't have to kiss them. What? Maybe you do. Y- yeah, you. I'm sure you do. It's it's twelve twelve fifty a plate. You better kiss him. Yeah, he's, you're gonna get kissed. Yeah, exactly. You're gonna get kissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm not doing that. All right. Uh, I'm not doing that. But I will say, as soon as they announced, as soon as like you know, her and Ray Fines had their they had their like face off, 
and Ray Fiennes is like, I know you're not, I know you're not a guest. I know you're in the service industry. That's how he does it. So they yeah. never even say explicitly she's an escort mm-hmm. or a prostitute, but he's like, I know you're in the service industry. And she's like, okay, I'm really, a, you know, I'm really from, my name is really Aaron and I'm actually from, um, you know, min, uh, Minnesota or whatever the hell, yeah. Michigan, Massachusetts. And I, and I was like, she's a, and I, and I'm sitting there, I pulled my phone out. I started Googling flights. I was like looking for Southwest flights to Massachusetts to go like, if she's an escort, if Annie Taylor Joy is an escort somewhere, I'm going there right now. You have that experience. Yeah, I pulled my phone out in the theater. They kicked me out. I was at an Alamo Draft House. They're very strict yeah. about that. So you don't know how it ended. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how the movie ended. <laughs> I just got to the point where I've Anya seen, Taylor I've Joy's seen an, enough. Anya Taylor Joy is an escort. I started. I started checking how many miles I had on my phone. <laughs> Full brightness in the middle of a dark movie ah, theater. It's only ten miles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like barely enough for anything. Uh, so shit gets weird. After shit that. gets weird, uh, because everybody's wondering why is this happening to us? Why why are they calling us out on these tortillas? Why did that guy kill himself? Why is everybody being mean? Is it all part of the show? Is it not part of the show? It goes on too. People, you know, the the characters in it. It goes on too long because. They don't know if it's part of it or not. And everybody else thinks, everybody, all the tables think that the other tables might not even be real. The movie critic, or the, the not the movie critic, the restaurant critic, she's, she's, she leans into her, to her magazine editor and is like, uh, this might all be for our benefit. This whole thing might be, these, like, all these other tables aren't even real diners. It's all a thing to, like, have fun with me because I'm so important. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you can get away with so much crazy stuff for so long before people really start to freak out. Uh, but really... They think it's boy, theater or they think it's... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so really, Ray finds... Snapped. Uh, but anyway, so he's he's going after all these people. Um. The only one that's an unintentional victim is Margot, Anya Taylor Joy. She's the only one he wasn't expecting to be there, and he finds he he susses her out, and he's like, "You're you're either with us, you're either with the service industry, the the chefs and the waiters, or you're with the diners." Okay, yeah, and they're gonna they, die. Yeah, they try to do a, a they try to do a discussion on. Uh, like class, <laughs> it starts to be like a class struggle. Like, you know, bourgeoisie versus the fucking proletariat kind of falls flat. Yeah. Doesn't really make sense. And jumping to the end, none of it really makes sense as far as like why anybody does any of this, right? Sure. Yeah. Like the what girl, was, like you mean the like the the chef team or the staff. Yeah. What yeah, was yeah. Ray Fine what was Ray Fine's reason for doing this? Yeah. Do you do you even remember? Not really. No. I mean like I guess because no one took him seriously anymore or it he was pretty much sold himself out and he didn't he started to hate his work, right? I mean that's what I gathered. He definitely wasn't happy. Yeah. Uh but no, he was like it was kind of like a very, you know, it was very catcher in the. It was very Holden Caulfieldy. He was he's he's sick of the phonies. <laughs> you know what I mean? The posers. Yeah, he's just mad at like rich people pretending to like his food. He gets he that sort of thing. He, the old man that was cheating on his wife, mm-hmm. um, who gets his finger cut off. That was fucked up. Uh, they go all banshees of insure on him. Uh, they. He's like, he's like, well, you know, you've eaten at this restaurant. You've eaten at my exclusive restaurant 11 times. What did you eat last time you were here? Yeah, name one thing. Name one of the dishes. Yeah. And they're like, no. He's like, I, I don't remember. Some sort of fish? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, so he's just, he's mad that, he's mad that he's not getting the artistic respect he deserves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, you know. And he's mad again, at the foodies. He's mad at his investor. You know, he's mad because he didn't like he, a film, which was just he funny. Ki- he kills it. Yeah, that's really funny. He kills his investor 
partner first. Yeah, he kills that guy. He dunks him into the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, they never explain how he got kidnapped or how he put him onto a thing. You know what I mean? But they don't. I don't think they do a good job of like really establishing why he's doing this. Yeah. And they certainly don't do a good job of establishing how he got this entire staff to go along with it. Yeah. It, I mean, and you can tell that like, they're just all sold into the cult, you know, pretty much from the beginning. Uh, when you find out like how they sleep, their living quarters, how no one leaves, yeah. no one takes breaks. No one, it's all, I mean, every hour, other than sleep is dedicated to this food. So you're yeah. like, oh, there's some good there's gonna be some cold shit here. And everyone is just dedicated, but that really is the only reason that you have that they are the way they are and the, the reason they're going along with it. That twelve plus other humans are saying we should kill all these people. Yeah. It also doesn't really make sense. Uh I mean it, it clearly doesn't make sense. But I mean like you know, people the rest people that are in the restaurant industry, they really are a different breed. Mm-hmm. I've worked at one restaurant in my life, and I didn't oh, work killers. hard. Who's called killers? No, they're all killers. Oh yeah, well they're, they're you know they. That's why they service it, our food because that's all they're good for. <laughs> Anthony Bourdain used to talk about it. He used to talk about like the 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 people that work that are line cooks in a restaurant. They 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 couldn't do anything else. Yeah, but they love they love doing. It's the hardest job in the world. You're standing up all day wearing Crocs. Uh, you know, and you're over a hot kitchen and you're, you're sweating and uncomfortable all day and you're so high stress, but those people that do it gen- genuinely love it. Yeah. Um, and there is a, there is a sort of like badassery to it. Um, uh, I do, I respect the hell out of it. I'll, I'll never do it. No, I would never do that either. I mean, I'd be, I've, I've been a bartender as close as I probably got to that situation. Yeah. I was a um, waiter and I would, I, do, a, I, I would was, do that again, but. Yeah. I was a waiter at a restaurant that didn't get a lot of business. So it was easy for me. Yeah. Uh, if that if that restaurant like had a lot if that restaurant was packed all the time, A they probably wouldn't have hired me because there would have been more capable waiters looking for that job. Yeah. But B I wouldn't have I wouldn't have lasted that wouldn't have liked it. I wouldn't have lasted that long. You're, um, you're more of an escort. <laughs> Yeah, I'm more of a. Uh, you're the if you're at a, the table. If, if you're a dude, it's a it, you're called a gigolo. Yeah, you're more of a gigolo, which doesn't sound um, as cool as an escort, but sounds kind of goofy. Really, I think it sounds better. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, uh, but yeah, so they just start killing everybody. It's just a restaurant. <laughs> where, it's a restaurant, it's a restaurant of death, and he's really, yeah. really eating it up. No pun intended. It, it's a restaurant, yeah. It's a restaurant of super billionaires where they just kill each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, the Clintons ate at this restaurant forty six times. <laughs> but we knew that. We knew that already. Yeah, it's like every 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 time Bill and Hillary show up for their reservation, you know people are going to die. They're going to kill like, we, somebody. They actually paid put, to go to the island to be able to kill like any staff they want. Well, Obviously, yeah, and also they can just choke also, someone out whenever. Yeah, it's like oh. The, the Clintons have a reservation this Saturday. That means we got to go round up a bunch of children uh, off the streets of off the streets of uh, the harbor so we can so we can serve them to them. Yeah, the, the Clintons Clintons want their adrenochrome. Yeah, dude, that's a real thing. They probably had that at that restaurant, adrenochrome. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So you know. They're trying to do the class discussion. Mm-hmm. I don't really think it makes sense. It doesn't particularly make sense. A, why Ray finds snapped and started doing this, nor why every single person is going along with it. You know, also 12 diners, they do they do 12 diners a night. Mm-hmm. So there's like six tables basically. Um, 12 diners a night. So what's twelve times twelve fifty? What? Hang on, I'm actually curious. Look that up because we're about to find out that. Yeah, this restaurant makes fifteen thousand dollars a night. Okay, that's not enough money for all this staff. I mean, if they're just not even being paid, which I, I think is what is happening. 
No, they have to. I mean, there, there's no way. It's it's a cult. It's not a cult. They never say that. You you made up the word cult. That has it, nothing to do. It alludes with this movie. to the. It doesn't allude to that. The attributes of a cult. You wouldn't. No, you wouldn't think so. They're all just no. It doesn't at all. They're all just like tired of it. But fifteen thousand dollars a night. There was like forty people working in this kitchen. All right. So fifteen thousand dollars a night. Times. Let's do times twenty. Times why, twelve. Why are you doing times twenty? Because I'm going to do twenty days of 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 a work week, a month, and then I'm going to do twelve months. You're doing twenty days. You're doing you're doing a twenty day month. Okay. Yeah. So fifteen thousand times twenty. Okay. Times twelve. Shit. How I, much is that a year? Hang on, I'm about to find out. Times twenty. Times 12. You. That is three million. That's three point five million dollars. Three point six million. That yeah, that's not enough money for this restaurant. Yeah. Uh, especially the staff. I mean, you don't even have to. You don't even have to multiply anything. You you're going the wrong way with it. You need to go to fifteen thousand and start dividing. <laughs> we we make fifteen thousand dollars a night. Yeah. How do we split that up between our head chef, chef, our two sous chefs, and then our maitre dom, our sommelier, and then the fifteen other people working in this kitchen? Everybody's making less than a thousand a night. Yeah. At the at the nicest five star restaurant on a private island in the entire world. That's just not that's not feasible. <laughs> that's why they should have made it fucking four thousand dollars a plate. Uh um, yeah. Which is still, you know, yeah, that now now everybody's making like you know, a grand and a half a night. Mm-hmm. Which is good money. Six days a week, that's the thing. They said they're only they're only closed on Sundays. Oh wow. Okay. So they're open six days a week. Shit. So that's good money, but that's still, you know, it's not like, it's not like hedge fund money. It's still restaurant money. Definitely. If you're making, you know, 1500 a day. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, Adam McKay was one of the producers on this film. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where the social commentary comes in. The, all the stuff about the, you know, uh, that's Adam McKay's touch of trying to be funny, and also the 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 class thing. Uh, M- McKay has his fingerprints on a lot of that, I think. Yeah, because he does that in his movies. He you know, especially now he's, he's trying up. to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't look up. Uh, Vice President, whatever Dick Cheney movie, all that kind Pretty of stuff. He's, he's yeah, yeah, he's trying to yeah, exactly. Did he do Big Short? I don't yeah, think he did. He did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to be a guy that says things. <laughs> um. He's making his mark. Yeah. The it's funny. It's a funny movie all the way through. You know, especially Anya Taylor Joy's boyfriend or you know client, as we find out later, because he's just on board the entire time, trying to eat all the stuff. He's like. They make all the men. They do have a, a most dangerous game. They make all the men run, and then they let all the women go inside and just like sit around and talk and eat. And uh, with the the woman sous chef, that was after that was after the 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 little me too section again. Yeah. They have to. They're they're too. They're trying to do too many like comments on too many different things. Yep. Um. So. Uh, you know, Ray Fiennes gets me tooed, but she's and fine. You know, she's fine with it. Remanded, yeah, and, and she's like, it was my idea for everyone to die. That was weird to me. It, yeah, it didn't make any sense. Because if he's the artist and he's really going through with it, he's just doing it because one of his chefs thinks it's a good idea. Well, no, as a as a sous chef, you're allowed to like create your own dish or pitch your own like thing. He yeah. created the restaurant of. Locally sourced everything. Every sure. night is a different theme. Um, everything's going to be different, but he'll accept themes from people. Mm-hmm. But the concept of we have a theme every night at this restaurant is his. No, that that makes sense. I'm saying that he would commit to killing everyone and then pretty much themselves as well. She's well, like, I think he was. That's a good uh, idea, Susan. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. It's it's weird. It doesn't make it doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> It doesn't make any it's sense. It's fine for this movie. It's about? fine for this movie. If it really is just like, oh, we're just trying to hit these like comedic things, like fuck it, who cares? Here's the, you know, yeah. The, the movie's just it's it's trudging trudging along. 
It's a funny movie, and yeah. Anya Taylor Joy is incredible in it. She's great, uh, but it's 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 funny. But if you think if you can't think about it too much, yeah. Because and I was trying to think about <laughs> I, I was as I was Good thinking about this it. film That's today. As I was thinking about this film today, trying to decide if I was going to recommend it or not, mm-hmm. I was like, I was trying to think of a, what does a recommendation even mean, or how do I how do I approach that? Yeah. And and it, what made it very clear was I walked out of the Fablemans and I immediately, you know, I texted Dave. No. Nice. I texted my parents. You know, I, I immediately like contacted people to be like, you have to watch the Fablemans. Nice. And that's a strong recommendation because yeah. I, I went out of my way to do it. Yeah, that's cool. The the menu, when I walked out of it, I really liked it. I thought it was really funny. I remember I remember liking it more yesterday than I do right now talking about it. Hmm. Um, like it lost its luster, maybe? Yeah, o- over overnight, over and just talking about it now and trying to remember trying to remember some of the reasoning or the motivations of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Now that I'm th- trying to think about what any of it meant, yeah, or what any of it was even about, that's now I'm at a point where I'm just not liking it as much. <laughs> I like that we captured it real time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, funny. <laughs> so it's funny. Also, what doesn't make sense is the foodie boyfriend yeah. when when they the big reveal is like is like. You knew everybody was going to die. That's why that's why you broke up with your girlfriend and hired a hooker instead. Cuz you were like nobody will care if she dies. Yeah, but if, he was I mean, if if he was going this is kind of a weird point I'm making, but if he cared about it so much that he was willing to die for it, like why would the chef go out of his way to make fun of him? Because he's like, "Wow, you're willing to die for this? Like you might you you must actually love food." Like I know foodie's like a buzz term, but I think you really love food. You know? Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. He's making fun of him because he's like, he's just a pretentious idiot who doesn't really understand anything. Sure. It's more of that. It's more like of that stolen valor kind of. Yeah, stolen valor. That's yeah, great. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, it's the great try. I was. I ca- I was howling, laughing when he they bring out the tea, and the guy goes like, "Is that is that bergamot? Am, am I am I?" He's, he's like, "Yes." He recognizes it, yeah. And then he's like, "Yes." Like he's so unimpressed. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I don't understand, I I get that of like, you're you're punking this poser. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's look. This is this is a movie about the streets. All right. It's a movie about it's a movie about the working class. Serving the posers, punking, punking these wannabes. All right. Yeah, that's what they have to do. They get this guy's like, you want to be a chef? Like, put on the jacket. We're gonna make you cook everything. And then he's he's never cooked anything in a commercial kitchen. He's freaking out. He's not doing anything right because everybody's like staring at him. And then he just serves heavy. Up some, that was yeah, a. He's, there's a lot of heavy moments like that. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of really mean moments and a lot of really funny moments, mm-hmm. kind of next to each other. Again, very Adam McKay. Um, and then yeah, it, they're and they're all just like humiliating. They're making this guy humiliate himself in front of everybody, mm-hmm. and then you know they eat his food and they're fucking you know he's so mean about it. And but then he, what I don't understand, he multiple migs him. He like he Hannibal Lecter's him where he he whispers something in his ear, mm-hmm. and then he that guy walks off and goes and kills himself. Yeah. <laughs> so what did he have on him? What did he know? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's the? What could he have? How could he have? How could he? Have, how could he have multiple mixed them that much? Yeah, to where he just kills himself. Which is honestly, Session. of every movie, su- of every movie superpower, I've thought this many times, but that Hannibal Lecter superpower is the one I want. Where you just tell people what to do, kind of? Are you? Well, no, you can just you can just whisper something into someone's ear so much that they kill themselves. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> how <laughs> awesome is that? I mean, that's that's such the, really that's the t- meanest. You really take them down a notch. Yeah, that's what because that's what that's what Anthony Hopkins does uh, in Hannibal Lecter. After after Miggs throws his semen on Jodie Foster, Hannibal Lecter he can't attack him. 
Remember? So he just like talks to him until he kills himself. Yeah. I think I'm doing that to my audience right now. <laughs> I don't think you do have that superpower. I don't think this is a great episode. That's why that's why that's why our downloads are going down cuz Yeah, that makes sense. Every time I every time I talk on this show, people just start killing themselves. Well, that was, I thought it was weird cuz I like our videos have like a negative count of views and I've never seen that on another uh YouTube video before, but I don't know. I yeah. just I thought it was like an error. I'll never get I'll never get monetized cuz I make YouTube lose we're paying money to users to, to upload where every, everyone else in the world is uploading for free. Um, yeah, anyway. just kind of a movie that's a little all over the place, not completely where you can't just enjoy it and get a chuckle here and there, yeah. right? I think I think we both agree on that. It's very funny. I walked yeah, out of this movie funny. thinking it was funny and thinking I really liked it. Well, I will say this, and I do like the fact that it, it takes place all in one room. Like the whole thing is in this dining room, with the exception of a brief here and there. Um, I loved, I I love some of those moments where. You think you're getting relief, and then it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I I don't even want to go full spoilers, but I loved the Coast Guard. Uh, oh, that was that captain. was interesting. That was an interesting scene for sure. You know, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And let's not even say if anybody survives or who may survive or who doesn't survive or okay. who finally succumbs. You know. Well, I want to uh, say I want to say that. This Go ahead, movie say something. was absolutely just, it was at one thing, no, like no matter what you could say, it's very like entertaining. Like if you want just like an entertaining movie, you know, you're like, you could let it, let some things go. Yeah. Uh, it definitely was entertaining like the whole time, you know, I oh, was it. Yeah. I was like, I was in it until the end. I, I was like in the movie, like kind of focused in, which I love that feeling. I love being in, you know, in a story uh, yeah. and it was entertaining. So I think for that reason, I, I would recommend it. Yeah, um, yeah. So we're I guess we're we're out of spoilers. Um, Jimmy recommends it. I think so. I. It's funny. You talked yourself into hating it. I don't hate it. I don't. I don't hate it at all. But I just can't remember. I can't remember what it was I really liked about it. I should have taken more notes, maybe. Uh, but other than the funny, how funny it was, how much it made me laugh. Even especially all some of the mean parts, um, I it really, I really li- I I really liked it yesterday. Now I'm thinking about it. It doesn't make a ton of sense. But if you're looking for a funny, if you're looking for a very unique and funny movie, yeah, with a little bit of a uh, clumsy social commentary, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, this is a movie for you. This is the movie for you. If you're looking for that uh, that blockbuster winter hit, <laughs> yeah, I've never seen. Yeah, exactly. I've never seen that anything mediocre like this. blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anything like this. You know, before, and I don't know. If, I don't know if they're going to make anything like it again. So, who knows? But I'll say I really. It's funny enough to make it worth it. Yeah, definitely. I thought I thought the movie was funny enough to like warrant all the other stuff that kind of doesn't make sense. Yeah. And also, I think that was probably the point. Also, I can just watch Anya Taylor Joy be in anything. Yeah, I've never seen her play chess, whatever that TV show was. I haven't Queen's seen that Gambit. Yet. Yeah, I never saw that. That's but I, I've, I've watched. I think most of her movies. So she's great in everything. She's worth it for sure. That is the kind of that, I, that's the kind of girl I want. Okay, I might start only dating girls who smoke cigarettes. Yeah, again. you should. Because if I can get a girl like Anna Taylor, if I can get a girl like that, you want an escort? Kind of. Get an escort that smokes cigarettes. <laughs> that's the thing is I don't smoke. I really am. I started feeling bad because I I am kind of that. I'm kind of her nerdy boyfriend. You're like no, it's gonna ruin it. No, I'm not that though. Okay, I don't like what in what way. I just I also like food stuff. I'm also like yeah, a dude who loves to cook and I watch a lot of food stuff and I try a lot of different things. Um and you know, food is like important. So I I recognize that guy a little bit in me. 
but not the part of like you know not wanting to die and not <laughs> well putting I putting your uh future smoking escort girlfriend in danger yeah and also caring whether she enjoys it or not yeah yeah that's the other, I, that that's would the other suck. thing i wouldn't want to be like here that's what sucks about like some relationships where it's like I really yeah. don't want to do this. Like, I would not take someone to that if I cared about it that much, and they're just going to be like a cock or like really not into it. Not even well, a dick, but even if, like, yeah, but yeah. even if they're not into it, as long as they're not ruining my good time. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Which he was accusing her. He was accusing her of doing that a couple times when I thought that I thought he was making unfair uh, accusations of her mm -hmm. to be like, you know, you're ruining it for me. I disagree. Uh, but yeah, as long as you're not ruining it for me, that's fine. I don't expect you. I know this is a weird thing that I'm into. Yeah. Same thing like, you know, seeing a weird band. It was like, just come out for the night. Yeah. Have a few beers. I know it's not your favorite band, but let's just, I'm going to, I'm going to really like them and you're going to, you're going to have a few beers and enjoy yourself. And you'll be there. Yeah. We'll be together. Yeah. There you go. That's always fun, but not, it didn't work out for them. Mm -hmm. The stars were not aligned. No. Nope. So yeah, I'm not really sure. The the my theater was laughing all the title cards of the cuz they they would cut away from the movie and they would go to like oh, to the dish. Like a yeah, food network yeah. description of a dish. Those got funny. And, yeah, that I made everybody bullshit. laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. That's pretty funny. That stuff that made everybody laugh, so that was really good. You you gave Again, it, you invoked an idea honestly about my experience because when you said the theater was laughing, the theater I was in, no one was really laughing. And mm -hmm. I think it might have been a more fun experience with people that maybe had better sense of senses of humor or a sense of humor that could understand what was happening. There was like mm -hmm. one other person laughing and then I was kind of laughing and it felt like very it made it a different movie. Like, I think, yeah. it, you know, does that make any sense? Sure. Of course. Yeah. yeah no, my whole theater was on it my whole theater was like that's fun i bet i would have yeah. liked it even more because i just i would get turned off from the weirdness of it and then there was a mm -hmm. funny part and i'm like oh yeah it's like funny you know yeah it's it's easier to laugh when there's a bunch of other people laughing along with you 100 percent. yeah uh and then because then if you you're hear... the only guy laughing at like this fucking whatever weird shit is going on you're like am i fucking weird <laughs> fucking i've been that this i've been comedy. that guy a bunch yeah like, I've, I'm that guy. Uh, I'm that guy in movies a bunch. Yeah. I'm laughing at something that's like not funny, but it's funny to me. Yeah, because I laugh at really mean stuff a lot of the times, mm -hmm. and stuff that people like. Even in even in the menu, I was laughing at like the most humiliating part, Tyler's no most shit. humiliating moment. Dang. That was like the audience was had, was feeling so uncomfortable, but yeah. I was laughing at this dude just getting his <laughs> comeuppance. I was like, aha. Yeah. Uh, Were you doing the Joker then, laugh? Yeah, I was doing I was doing the Nelson laugh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hee 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 hee. Uh yeah, I was laughing a bunch at like <laughs> some of the meanest sections. So the crowd wasn't with me on that. <laughs> but... You were just laughing at the wrong times. <laughs> no, I was right. I was right to laugh. <laughs> okay. Those are funny. Those are the funniest. I mean, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, Let's dude. wrap it up. Uh <laughs> I don't know. This isn't. Uh, this wasn't our best episode. <laughs> I wasn't too. I, I, mean, I don't know. I, what think, I, was I think it was a hard movie to talk about because there's so many ways you could fucking, I guess, think about it. I mean, not that it's yeah. like a thriller with like an interesting ending. It's just like it's kind of a new thing, you know, or not it's, a familiar thing at least. So yeah, it's very weird. Yeah. Um, because the class, because like the social commentary didn't land, it was hard to even talk about it. Sure. Because. Then I got to do all the legwork of talking about, um, you know, uh, service versus takers and like people, you know, producers versus uh, consumers. Sure. You know, I, and I don't want to talk about all that. Yeah. Um. Also, I didn't think, you know, I thought it looked good. I don't think there was anything too spectacular about like the cinematography or anything. I can't. I can't even think yeah. of a. I can't think of a particular shot. Um, I will say, what's her name? Anya Taylor Joy. Ha she's wearing these like gold paperclip earrings that are like cool, cool <laughs> girl earrings. Mm -hmm. So hot. Yeah, she's unbelievably hot, folks. Well, so, I'm just glad we found your type. 
it's worth seeing this movie for her. Yeah, I might go. I might go. I might. I might make that my mission to to find a mm-hmm. find a chick like that. Yeah, I think it should be just a leather a a leather a leather jacket girl who like cool girl. Yeah, that might be that might be the move. I think it is. I think it's time for you. Yeah, absolutely. I dated a lot of like nerds and wholesome girls and Ew. straight up psychopaths and I you know I've done the whole yeah, I've done gamut, that. but I think but now you need the Queen's thing. Gambit. Yeah, well. That's true. That's, know. You did you, you know there's a different words, right? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I gambit. Just reminded gambit. me of it. Okay. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, tell us if you like this one, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this, whatever, your experience of this podcast, this episode, might be the experience of the movie. Maybe we captured the energy of it you know perfectly. What? You know what, audience? Right. I keep telling you to share and leave comments. I don't see that many comments, Okay. So, I keep giving you my heart and soul every week, and I'm getting back nothing from you. Okay, I. You know what? I'm back in on this movie. I know exactly I'm why. I'm back. He's back. I know exactly why Ray Fine snapped and started murdering everybody. All right. And guess what? There's not going to be an end to the spoiler section <laughs> because I just did. You that. ruined it for yourselves. Yeah. This is your. This is yeah, your you. punishment. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah, but anyway, keep your eyes out for more episodes. I'm really excited. Uh, later this week, me and uh, Clarence are getting together, and we're doing a symposium. We're doing a long episode. I'm going to split it up into like three parts to kind of get me through the winter, or through December, the winter. <laughs> get me through the rest of the month. But we're doing a whole thing on video game movies. Oh, that should be good. That, yeah, yeah that's want, a good idea. It, yeah, so we're gonna him and I are going to talk like... cool four different ones so we'll just do a long one so i can cut it up into like 45 minute episodes or whatever yeah um kind of you know i was inspired by the fact that the new mario movie's coming out Mm -hmm. have you seen any of those trailers yeah doesn't that look bad yeah slash it looks like i mean it's for kids yeah it's not for us so is it is it more for kids i need i i i've I've only seen the first trailer I, i haven't seen the second one yet yeah but I don't know. Um, what's his name's voice? Chris Pratt is the voice of Mario, and he's like not even trying. No. <laughs> but anyway, the idea was like, let's talk about if there's any good video game movies. Yeah. What about the original Mario movie with John Leguizamo? Um, that one's insane. Yeah, it is wild. It's so That's weird. I haven't seen it insane. in so many years. I haven't seen it since I was a kid, but uh, it's. Definitely a weird one. They made a world. I'm trying to think of the ones just off the top of my head. The World of Warcraft one they made. Oh, did they make one of those? Yeah, I never saw that. Yeah, that's one. we're going to talk about um, Doom. So we're yeah. going to talk about two the Rock movies. One is Doom. Okay. One is Rampage. Oh yeah, Rampage. That's kind of an just, odd one they did a movie about, but okay. Yeah, well, it's a, yeah, it's a weird game with no story. How do you how do you even make a movie about it? And then um, we're going to talk. Uh, I think Resident Evil. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then a couple others that we had. Uh, I mean, technically, others we... Pokemon, maybe. All those movies are like cartoon movies, though. I don't mean so. Yeah. If you make a, if they make a cartoon, you know, Pokemon was a TV show slash a video game slash a card game. Yeah. Sla- Pokemon's like a whole thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Oh, Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah, 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 which is the best of the. I just rewatched in, in order to prepare for my for this symposium. Mm-hmm. I just rewatched the new. I watched both Mortal Kombat's, the new one and the original one. I love a, I love the original one, man. I love so the much. original one so much. It's I so love sick. it so much. As a kid, I adored it, and as an adult, I've watched it twice in the last two years, and I love it. And then the the I I love the new Mortal Kombat. But whatever, folks, you can hear me talk more about video games and how they translate to movies or how they don't. Uh, um, that'll be an on the couch episode with Clarence. Uncharted. Uncharted. Thank you. I forgot about that. Yeah, I've already Uncharted. done an episode on that. Nice. I had never even heard of that game. That's the other thing is a lot of these games I haven't even played. So mm-hmm. the stuff I have played like Doom, Rampage, Resident Evil, 
I've played all that and Mortal Kombat. I've played those four games. So that's kind of why I, I that's kind of why I'm like focusing on those four mm-hmm. and of course the upcoming Mario thing. But you know, they don't make movies of the video games I play typically. Yeah. Um they never made a Banjo Kazooie <laughs> movie, although they should. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> and uh oh, I guess you know what? Goldeneye, James Bond, but those are like video games. Those are making th- those are video games they made of a movie franchise. Sure, yeah. So that's different. Whatever. I'm reiterating stuff that you'll hear up on the upcoming video game symposium of Let's Get Trashed. Uh, Jimmy D, where can the folks find you? Oh uh, yes, a sleepy cowboy TX is my Instagram. It's probably the best way to communicate with me. See what's going on. Very cool. Uh, and follow me. Let's on the get tra- at get trashed pod on Instagram. At Get Trash Pod, and then follow uh, the Twitter. Let's get trashed pod, I think. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, two recommendations for the menu for different reasons. But anyway, thanks so much. I appreciate it, and let's get trashed. Bye bye. <laughs>